Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of City of Broken Dreamers. In the last one, we, uh, you know, we we did some stuff. Actually, actually, in the last in the last one, I helped out uh, Chandra. I helped her rescue her her friend from what looked like a, to be like a some sort of drug den or something. So after that, you know, everything I think will be okay. Uh, her friend was really out of it, but we, we sent her home on her way, and she should be good to go in the hands of her capable parents. And now I'm here, like, back at Kyle's apartment, and uh, we're just going over some files and stuff. So let's go ahead and jump back into this, go over some of these files, and, and then uh, go from there. Let's see. That, tell me about the limiter. Due to the experimental nature of the generation augment... Now, Sam, Sam's like a British guy, but I don't know, like, up until now, Sam hasn't said a whole lot of stuff, so I don't know how well I could do a British accent through all this. So, uh, you know, I'm really not going to try to too hard here. Due to the Brit due to the experimental nature of the Generation 1 Augment program, early candidates' bodies would often collapse from the strain of the increased strength and cardiovascular capabilities. A device known as a limiter was introduced to regulate proper body activity in the Generation 1 Augment program. Typically, the limiter was located at the base of the neck. During normal use displayed with the green light, the limiter would keep proper respiratory and musculoskeletal functions. You know what, I think Henry has a limiter on his neck because if you've ever if you've noticed in any of the previous videos he has some sort of uh, thing on the back of his neck during combat or high stress as detected by heightened adrenaline the limiter would switch to combat readiness as evidence when it turns red in this mode the limiter would adjust the nano and chemical augmentations in the subject to increase speed strength and awareness the limiter was phased out in the generation 2 augments due to complications uh, what kind of complications, Sam? None specified, sir. Okay, what next? All right, let's uh, let's talk about Henry. Sam, bring up what they have on this fella. Sergeant Major Henry Gibson, born in International Falls, Minnesota, he climbed to the rank of Sergeant Major in the Marines before being honorably discharged. Gibson spent most of his career in the Pacific Theater. He is fluent in Japanese, Korean, and Mandarin. During the Japanese liberation of Taiwan, Gibson was wounded, causing paralysis from the waist down. Bainard Industries had suggested it would be very likely that the Augment program could restore his ability to walk. Bainard was true to the word. In fact, he was one of the first that succeeded in the initial trials where many would follow. He was walking within months. During the war, Gibson's unit was renowned for their effectiveness, but also their ruthlessness. He was rewarded two bronze stars a Medal of Valor, and finally, a Purple Heart. Sam continues to read more information on his biography, mostly relating to his career in the Marines. Okay, what next? Sam, bring up the information on the first-gen augments. Let's see if they have anything I don't already know. Yes, sir. Bringing up the unredacted version. Someone likes you, sir. Perfect, let's see it. The augment program was created in joint by the United States military and the Baynard Corporation. The counter was needed for the Akatuski Red Moon program. It was the United States answer. Biological, chemical, and nanotech were used in the subject to increase speed, strength, and awareness. A device known as a limiter was used to manage the subject's abilities. This, in turn, kept them operational throughout the war. Though effective in battle, the Red Moon quickly discovered that a highly charged EMP directed at the base of the neck would render the subject immobile. For this and other reliability reasons, the first generation augments stopped production immediately after the Treaty of Hiroshima was signed. Problems with the augments included failing limiters, chronic pain, and almost universal cases of severe PTSD. The first generation augments were soon replaced with less ambitious second and third generation models. Sam continues to read out reports and technical schematics on the program. Okay, what next? Sir, I should remind you that you are due to leave shortly. Right. Alright, so I guess we're not going to uh, get that last file read. 
Oh man, damn Sam, that was a long day. I may have to, uh-oh, uh I'm supposed to leave shortly, right? I'm about to, oh wait, I'm dreaming again. Man, there has to be something. We can do something else, anything. God damn you, Meredith. Crying can be heard up ahead. My God. Both well, Sonia and your comms begin to erupt in static-filled chatter. Agents, the asset is out of control. We have 47 dead, and that's just so far. You know what you have to do. Kyle, over there. Stick close. Oh, there's a child whimpering over here. Like, there's dead people all through. I'm assuming this is like an apartment building or something. I can't. Oh, shit. It's Gloria. Hold on, what? Why are you... It's you. Who are you? Hold on, what the... What the... Okay, he's having a flashback, right? But he saw Gloria as she is now and not as a little girl. But then in one of the previous videos, Gloria saw... She saw one of these agents, a, a ghost. And I wonder if that ghost she saw was Kyle. This is kind of interesting. I wonder if they're connected in some way. Can't wait to find out. Sir, you need to get up. I'm up. I'm up. Sam, how long was I out? 42 minutes, sir. I've been trying to wake you for the last 14. Shit, call Sonia. Time to do this. Calling Sonia Burns. Come on, Sonia, pick up. Where the hell are you? Damn it. Sonia, you got the call, didn't you? Sam, looks like we're doing this on our own. Is that wise, sir? Don't have a choice. Time to get ready. Okay, disable bug. Wait, disable bug? What bug? What bug are we disabling? I'm going to disable the bug. And while I'm at it... There we go. Um, Show's over, Victoria. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Let's lay out the guns. Let's lay out the the tools of the trade. Back in the fray. I like his helmet. That's badass. It's more of like a gas mask, but it looks cool. And oh, this is uh this is Ellen, right? Oh, let me see this car. Let me see what he drives. Oh, you know what? I clicked ahead on that one. My bad. Ooh, that's a nice car. This guy drives in style. That is so sexy right there. Hold on. Who is she with? Oh, she did get the call. Now, any of you misfits have a clue where this girl is? Um. Oh, man, Sonya. Damn it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is cool. She's actually being loyal to, to Kyle. Not in the faintest. Good job, Sonya. Way to, way to stay loyal. And who is this? Oh, it's the doctor. This whole thing is insane. This is bigger than he thinks. I just know it. Of course, sticking my nose where it didn't belong is what got me here in the first place. But I was always taught to find the truth, so I wouldn't have it any other way. Be safe out there, Kyle. I just love this. Him him driving in his badass car with all his gear. And who is this? This is Victoria, it looks like. That's why it's calling. It looks like while everybody's going to bed, like getting their rest, Kyle is just now ramping up to go just fight some... Just... Just be a badass, basically.
And here's Henry. All right. Snoring. Henry, are you awake? Henry continues to snore. Biggs, wake up. Gloria, what's the matter? It's early. Another nightmare? It's not that. The one I told you about in my dream. He's here. 